Okay, so today we're going to be doing a comparison on eukaryotic and prokaryotic replication and protein synthesis. So we're just going to go down the line through some of the key concepts that we'll need to know. Okay, so the first thing we're going to see is that DNA polymerase. Okay? So in eukaryotics, there's only one. And so it does everything. It'll remove primers, it'll lay down the track. Um, but in prokaryotics, we have three. Okay? So we have three and we're going to go through both all three of them. Okay? So we need to know, the first thing is number two, that's probably the most important out of all of them, is that it's unknown. And so that sounds kind of crazy, the, the most important one is the one that you don't know anything about. Um, but that's the thing. Uh, the other two do fairly similar things, um, but the second one's the, the most obvious is that it's unknown. So we don't know what it does. All right? um, so the first one removes primer. Right? Um, and so the third one uh, puts down the DNA. All right, so it lays the track down, it does the, the basic function. All right? So the second one we're going to look at is structure. So eukaryotic chromosomes, linear, versus prokaryotics, which is circular. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be looking at is origin of replication. So origin of replication, uh, if we can imagine um, this being uh, the, the two uh, parent strands of DNA, and when they're getting replicated, we have this replication bubble. Okay? And this is when we start uh, laying down the next uh, daughter um, set of DNA. Um, and so we'll have, these are called origin of replication, where the replication starts. So in eukaryotics, we have many. And um, in prokaryotics, we have only a single one. Okay? And then th what that would look like is something called theta replication. And so what this shows is that uh, we're going to be replicating on this side and replicating down like that. And it kind of looks like theta. Um, so the reason why there's many in eukaryotics, only one in prokaryotics, is the fact that um, your, your genome for the eukaryotics is much, much bigger. So you're going to have to have many different origins of replication. So introns and exons, what are those um, and when are they present? So we have yes in eukaryotics, no in prokaryotic. Um, so introns, I guess you can think of it um, in, like, like the fast food restaurant, in and out. Okay, so um, introns are removed. Um, they're the they're, they're nonsense DNA, um, that's what many scientists think, but now they're kind of thinking that maybe they're, they're not nonsense anymore. But for the MCAT, we just know that introns are removed, they're, they're garbage DNA, we don't need them. Okay? And exons are what's important, what, what actually is the coding. Okay? And now for RNA polymerase. So the reverse is true in this one. So before we had um, prokaryotics having three DNA polymerase, but now we have eukaryotics having three RNA polymerase. So the first one, um, second one, and the third one, we'll go over all of those. And so the first one, um, it transcribes our RNA. Um, and the second one transcribes mRNA. And the third one transcribes tRNA. Okay? And so for prokaryotics, if you can guess, we just have one. So now we're going to go on to mono versus polycystronic. Okay, so um, what this is kind of saying is that one gene will translate to one protein is monocystronic and polycystronic means one gene can translate to multiple proteins depending on how many open reading frames there are. Um, so eukaryotics is monocystronic um, and prokaryotes is polycystronic and that should make sense again. The fact that uh, one gene can correlate to one protein, so one gene to one protein, um, is pretty obvious in the fact that our, our genome is so big in eukaryotic. So we can afford to have one gene be specific for each protein, but for prokaryotic, prokaryotes, um, their genome is so small, so they, they may need to have uh, multiple overlap. Okay? So now location. Where is you know, DNA replication occurring? Um, well, in eukaryotics, it's in the nucleus. Okay? So that's important. In prokaryotics, there is no nucleus. So it will be in the cytoplasm. Um, likewise, RNA transcription um, is in the nucleus and as well um, in the cytoplasm for prokaryotics, prokaryotes. Um, but so RNA translation, I didn't write that down, uh, but that would be um, in the cytoplasm. It would be in the cytoplasm where the ribosomes are on the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, and in prokaryotics, it would also be in the cytoplasm. Right? So between transcription and translation, um, the DNA will, uh, or the, 
actually the, the RNA will move out um, of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm. So the last things we're going to be looking at um, are ribosomes. So um, the ribosomes are made of two components. So what are those two components in eukaryotics and prokaryotics? Prokaryotes. Um, it's 40S and 60S, which makes a total of 80S. Um, and in prokaryotes, it's a 50S and a 30S equals 70S. Okay. Um, so the, the smaller subunit is the 30S and the bigger subunit is 50S and likewise in 40 and 60. Um, so now where is RNA polymerase bound to or, or what does it look for um, in order to bind to something? Um, so it's going to look for the Tata box in eukaryotes and um, in prokaryotes it's similar to the TATAAT uh, otherwise known as the Pribno box. Uh, so nobody calls it that, they all call it the, the Pribno box. Um, and so in eukaryotes and prokaryotes, uh, where is the ribosome bound to or where does it look for to bind? Um, and this is the Shine del Grano. And in eukaryotes, it's the uh, Kozak sequence. Um, and, and this one is, is probably the, the one that we will never really need to know. Um, it's not very important at all. Um, but we also have the five prime cap and the poly A tail and this kind of this is very random. Um, it's just that we we, we um, have post translational or post transcriptional modifications um, for eukaryotes and that's the five prime cap and the poly A tail. So if you see any of this on the test, they will probably ask you, um, you know, where's the Tata box? You know, what is it for? And also who has it? The prokaryotes or eukaryotes. So just be familiar with these and these are just things that you kind of have to memorize.